Welcome to Revolutionary Gazette. I'm Will. We want to say thanks to the Waterloo Area Historical Society for hosting us today, and we want to bring you a recipe out of the book, The Adventures of Ebenezer Fox in the Revolutionary War. Now, in the fall of 1779, young Fox is a 16-year-old lad in Boston. His family has many kids, so he's been apprenticed to a wig maker. That wig maker has a problem. He's been drafted into the American Army. Not wanting to go and not able to find a substitute, his young apprentice, eager for adventure, says, I'll go, and is allowed to. Young Fox, before going to the Navy later in his account, first joins Captain Bird's company of Colonel Proctor's regiment. That's all we have to go on, but it's enough. He's in the 4th Regiment of Artillery. He talks about going from Boston to Roxbury, Massachusetts. They pick up six ammunition wagons and escort them to Peekskill, New York, successfully. Well, unfortunately, along the way, the men have problems with rations. They're at the farm of a Quaker, and they find many fowl one evening. They kill them, pluck them, and they mention boiling quickly. Those of us who know anything about cleaning chickens realize that they probably were scalding to make the plucking easier. They put them in their knapsacks and march until the next day, and let's listen to what happens after they get to camp the next night. We halted at a farmhouse, and having borrowed a large brass kettle, emptied the contents of the knapsacks into it, combining therewith a goodly quantity of onions, potatoes, and carrots, and soon converted the heterogeneous mass into what we called a chicken soup, which, though it might not have been very palatable to an epicure, was not to be despised by a company of hungry soldiers. Well, that's a great story, and that's what we're going to do today. We're lacking the brass kettle from the farm, so we'll use a mess kettle instead. The one thing that's going to be different here is we're going to use a modern breed of chicken, and we're going to use modern vegetables. We could get closer if we could source heirloom breeds, but for today, let's get going. So my buddy Hayden and I are hungry for a meal. We can tell one thing that they probably made a mistake for those who know how to make soups. Normally, you would start the meat and the bones cooking to cook it down, start a stock, and then you'd add the vegetables. When Fox talks about the heterogeneous max, I think he totally goofed. He and his buddies were hungry. Everything went in the pot. That's what we're going to do. So we're going to go ahead, cut everything up, get it stewing for a few hours, and let's see what this meal tastes like. Um. So, remembering that these guys weren't culinary geniuses, I'm going to go ahead and cut the chickens down a little bit to make them cook a little bit better, but I'm not right away looking to cut it up into a ton of chunks. We might do it a little bit later. All right, well, in the 21st century, I pride myself at being pretty good at cooking, and that's about the roughest I've ever taken apart a chicken, but I'm trying to keep in mind what it would be like for a young lad of 16, stuck away from home, in an era when his mother and sisters do most of the cooking, so his skill set would not be that high. We're gonna continue cutting things up and keep going making the stew. Okay, well, Fox talks about a goodly quantity of carrots, potatoes, and onions, and we have that, and we have one of the chickens that he wrote about carrying for a day on a march out of his knapsack. Let's put this on the fire, and we'll let it start to boil. I suspect this will take a couple of hours to do, and we'll come back and see. The one piece of knowledge about making soup that we are going to apply is that we're going to bring the soup up to a boil, and then we're gonna bring it back to a simmer just to let things keep cooking. And we'll go for a while. You'll see a little bit of it, and we'll be back in a bit. Mm -hmm. 
well, we're back. You've seen the soup cooking a couple of times, as Fox talked about. We cut everything up, put it in all at the same time, brought it up to a boil, and then let it down at a slow simmer for about three hours. Uh, we've stirred it regularly to not let the bottom burn. And as we've been going on, everything has broken up. I can't even find the bones right now. We'll have to watch out and be careful. Let's see what this is. I'm gonna think this is probably gonna be pretty bland because let's face it, what was in the menu? Chicken, water, onions, potatoes, carrot, no salt, no pepper, no other pot herbs. Let's see what we get here. Thank you. You seem to be lacking eating utensils, my friend. Yeah, I got a spoon, that'll do. Oh, that was a chunk of meat. There you go. Well, I tell you, the, this is bland. Yeah. And Fox even said, not set for an epicure, which is basically roughly translated a foodie of the time period. But man, if I'm marching all day and I'm handed this compared to uh, dumplings or biscuits or something, or just flour, this will work just fine for a hungry soldier. What do you think? Really bland. It's an improvement from normal military rations of, you know, having beef or pork. Chicken's nice to mix it up, but still not ideal. Pot herbs would be really nice with this. Well, the ingredients are simple and found on the marks. The recipe is simple because the soldiers threw it together based on it's what they had. No spices, good food. It'll be bland, but it'll fill you up. Use this recipe, find a connection to history. We'll see you down the road at Revolutionary Gazette.